subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder hi guys this is dr marwa and uh, well don't worry i'm not here to teach you any new topic or any update from any textbook i am here because it's close to the exam time and uh, i was getting a lot of queries with respect to exam related stress mental fogging performance related issues and anxiety levels really shooting up so i had this query from young doctor which i would like to address at this forum uh, this young doctor said that i don't remember anything well this is perfectly normal this happens with all of us because we try to read so much we try to put so much of information in our neurons that our neurons are you know a little flabbergasted our neurons are under a lot of duress a lot of stress at the moment but our neurons have a lot of plasticity so they are able to imbibe all this information and whatever you putting in your brain right now it will not go waste you will realize that when you will be sitting in the examination hall in the front of the computer all this knowledge will come in handy so the first part of the query don't bother about it but yes when it comes to the second part of this particular query which said my gt performance is not increasing beyond 50 55% i do have a solution or a set of solutions for it so let's go into them one by one the first solution is that whenever you attempt a test you are bound to get some negative you know it could be 50 it could be 60 on bad days it could be 100 correct and 100 wrong and the day we get 100 incorrect you know it's it's going to be really a bad day for us but you see the point is you need to note down what really went wrong on that day you see we try to save that information in our mobile most of the time we try to save or mark that particular question but we'll never go back to that question again so i would suggest you to invest in a simple 100 page register the traditional old way and note down the summary of that entire answer in a single line it could be a four liner five liner six liner mcq but there would be some concept some logic behind why a b c d is an answer to a question so if you just note it down quickly you know not a long story just precise facts you would be able to relate to what really went wrong and most of the time you will realize it was not lack of knowledge it was lack of application it comes with practice but once you write it down and when you read that again and again you would be able to enhance your performance in fact we come to solution number 2 that is persistence if you revisit the same set of what went wrong you see obviously you're doing a great job by getting a lot number of correct questions but if you invest time in what really went wrong that would help you correct your approach to the same type of question i don't say the same question would be asked but the same type of question when it comes again your approach your methodology to that will definitely improve with step number 2 step number 3 is what i have highlighted but i'll say that again for the sake of completion there are two aspects why a question can go wrong one is lack of knowledge well we all doctors you know we think we don't have sufficient knowledge so right from third years when we start going to the wards we start reading a topic you know extensively we start reading 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 and we think that ek din aayega when i'm gonna be a boss of that subject and that day all the mcqs will go right but that day will never come believe me even i have never attained that particular nirvana that you know i am a boss of a subject and all the questions will go correct even you know when you put in your best efforts even then questions will go wrong so nobody will become a master of this medical science ever ever because this is so vast this is so extensive and neither i would suggest you to become a boss of one or few particular subjects just try to do all the subjects equal equal and try to upgrade the ones which you are more comfortable with and i'll not edit anything here i just want to say it's not the lack of knowledge it is rather lack of application that matters the next query that came up said how do i revise without rapid revision and uh, i think the young doctor is trying to come here to the fact that he wants to use the main uh, videos well yeah you can use the main videos at 2x it would they would deliver the same performance but if you are uh, i would say if that is taking time then rapid revision would be a relatively uh, easier approach and then part 2 of this question said i tend to go off the track well you see when you try to accelerate too hard round up bend there is bound to be so much of you know horsepower generated that your car can go off the track if you look at this image there's a average car there's a porsche the average car is able to take the bend very smoothly but the guy in the porsche because he was too enthusiastic he pressed on the accelerator too hard he delivered too much of horsepower he lost traction and the car went off the track so don't try to accelerate too hard don't try to do too many subjects in a day restrict yourself to one or max two subjects in a day because i get queries like i've done half of pharmacology and one fourth of pathology i don't know how you can quantify but believe me you know when you when you start doing it in half and chunks it really ne- never gets 
so well. It just gives you a pseudo confidence that, okay, you know, I'm going two subjects in a day, three subjects in a day because I don't want to get bored with the subject. But, uh, you know, there, there is nothing like whether you are getting bored or whether you are very happy with the subject. All subjects are equally monotonous. It really does not matter. Just get the monkey off your back and dedicate a fixed number of days for a particular subject and get over with your revision, move on to revision number two so that you are able to complete the topic. You know, don't try to be a master of something because it's practically not possible. The next query that came up was the hardest for me to answer because uh, this doctor uh, wrote uh, his feelings and uh, this doctor said that uh, what is the use of all this hard work when others will get it so easily? Well, I would not like you to compare yourself with others. You know, everybody is in his or her time zone and that time in that time zone, you, know, you tend to peak at a particular point of time. So your career might be starting a little later as compared to others, but maybe you will be getting more fame and more money as compared to a person who started earlier than you. So I would say fight with yourself, not fight with others. Try to dedicate more number of hours than what you dedicated yesterday. Keep on enhancing your performance on a regular basis so that you are able to get the desired results because everybody's peak time would come at a different time zone. Another query that came up here was that uh, should I be using English or English for the upcoming FMG December 22 exam? Well, doctor, whatever that suits you better language wise is what I would recommend. Uh, if your mother tongue is uh, Hindi, then you can use the English version. Otherwise, there is no gross difference between the two. It is simply that in Hindi, you tend to explain a little more because that happens to be mother tongue. So you tend to be a little more descriptive. Otherwise, the basic data in both of them is same. Coming to the next query, it said, uh, hello, sir, how are you? This was my second drop and I got my worst rank. Uh, I want to do good, but my half-hearted attempts fail me. Uh, well, uh, uh, you know, we all have the sixth sense and uh, that half-hearted approach, I think, doctor, you are answering part of this question yourself that the effort has to be more. Uh, uh, sir, please help me with the approach and plan. Well, the approach has to be warrior mode. No, I mean, you have six weeks for your exam. So you know that you need to put in your best. Now, since you have already sat for the exam, I can say that you would have realized that some kind of topics, you know, like electrolytes in medicine or let me say some components of uh, uh, ABG are always asked. So if you can just go through that, if you can go through the previous year papers and if you would be going through that same set of questions again, uh, the values will change. But the analytical skills of yours will definitely come in handy. So when it comes to the plan, the planning part would be that whatever are the low hanging fruits, because there are some topics which are always inherently asked. So if you can gather the low hanging fruits and similarly cut down on the negative part of yours for which I had mentioned in the initial part three steps, how to reduce the negatives, I think that you would be able to achieve uh, your desired goal and you would be able to come out with flying colors. So these are some of the queries which came up and I thought that I'll use this forum to address and I'm anyway open to more of your questions. Uh, you can uh, send me across at marvamedicine at gmail.com and I will be more than happy and glad to answer as many as I can. Thank you.